Are you bored of doing the same old tired ab routine? Are your ab exercises way too easy and not challenging enough? Well, for the small price of- uh, Welcome back to another video. Uh, back to our docs. Uh, today we're training core. And a lot of you will probably see core and think uh, abs. Yes, that's true. It is abs, but it's more than just your ab. Your core, I like to call it the trunk. So we've got your abs as well, obliques, and then our low back as well. So all around here is our core. So which we use for a lot of things actually. So it's not just the abdominals, which we all can see. It's not about getting a six pack. That's not the, what this workout is about. It's about getting a strong core to help you improve on every single one of your lifts. When it comes to overhead pressing, when it comes to Olympic lifting, when it comes to your squats, your deadlift, you have a weak core that actually affects your um, heavy lifts. So uh, hopefully you enjoy these exercises because they are something that probably a lot of you have never tried before. And some of them you've probably seen me, me do them on my Instagram and my um, strength and conditioning video. So I thought I'd put all of them together. And uh, yeah, I, I just did them and it kicked my ass. So I hope you enjoy uh, this video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. That will be awesome. And uh, if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe. So what I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do is run you through every single one of the exercises, as I always do, and uh, explain why I absolutely love them and the benefits to every single one of them. The rower pike ups is a great core exercise. Now, I am aware that a lot of people use a stability ball to do this, which I have done also um, in a previous video. However, I find using the rower is also a great substitute. It helps give a bit more stability so you can fully focus on the movement. And of course, if you prefer, use a stability ball. So first I like to have my arms shoulder width apart. As you get onto the seat of the rower, you want to make sure you engage your core and keep it tight. Now avoid letting your lower back sink down. This would be similar to a plank. The main reason I like using the rower is if your lower back sinks down to, towards the floor, it will be harder to perform this movement. Now deep breath in, squeeze your glutes and row your feet in towards you. As you can see in the video, my abs are fully engaged at the top of the pike. And as you go back down, slowly release the air from your stomach and repeat. Please be careful with this at first, but honestly, it's an amazing core exercise that not only helps build core and lower back strength, but helps with shoulder strength and stability for those heavy overhead and compound lifts, or as a great accessory work to help with gymnastics movements. You can also perform this before a heavy gymnastic session, a great way to activate your shoulders and your core. The medicine ball slam is a great workout for your core that a lot of people aren't doing. Now there is a big difference between doing ball slams during a workout and doing it predominantly to focus on your core. So I'm going to slow the video down to explain what you were aiming for. First thing you need to do whilst taking the ball over your head is to engage your core or brace your core. So that just means taking a deep breath in and keeping your core tight. Get onto your toes and to slam the ball down you need to crunch down. Think of it as the same motion as performing a cable crunch. So you would be crunching down to slam the ball rather than focusing on using your hands to slam the ball down. So crunch in and then slam the ball down onto the floor. This is what makes this a great workout for your core. Now with the rotational slams, again, engage your core, take a deep breath in before you pick up the ball. And then as you twist to slam the ball, make sure you squeeze your obliques as hard as you can when slamming the ball down. Again, watch my feet to see how I rotate my body each time I slam the ball down to the ground. So no, I haven't gone mad. This is actually a great progression of an ordinary plank. Using a kettlebell or a dumbbell to add resistance to make your core work 10 times as hard. Now the setup. 
I use weighted dip belt and a kettlebell. Watch closely as I get into position. This is very, very important. Make sure you brace your core and engage your glutes, as in take a deep breath in before you get onto the bench. Once you're in the plank position, squeeze your glutes and keep your abs tight. What's great about this exercise is if your lower back sinks down, the weight will touch the floor and that indicates that you aren't engaging your core enough. The best tip to remember when doing a plank is one, engage your glutes, aka squeeze your glutes, and two, take a deep breath in. By doing this, two simple things automatically engages your core. If you are not used to bracing, I suggest exaggerating when taking a deep breath in to make sure you are doing this correctly. Now, please watch how I descend down from the plank. This is very important as well. Please, please, please make sure you start light with this. Even if it's just body weight, as elevated plank feels so different to a normal floor plank. You can put a plate on your back also as an alternative, but I prefer the exercise this way because the kettlebell hitting the floor is a cue that my core is not engaged. Now this exercise is absolutely savage. I did this with my coach in a few previous videos. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's a strength and conditioning video uh, with one of my coaches and hence why I thought it would be a great exercise to share with you all. And honestly, you probably will get some funny looks when doing this in the gym, but trust me when I say it is brutal and very effective. Now I'm using a light resistant band and a 2.5 kilo plate. To execute this exercise correctly, you want to make sure to stand as far from the bar to really get a good stretch on the band. It should feel like the band is trying to pull you back in. Next step, of course, is to engage your core by taking a deep breath in. Then get on your toes and you're going to drop into a split stance as quick as possible. Choose either right or left leg. I like to alternate. Now, I know most of you are already wondering what the actual hell is this and how is it a core workout? Well, you see, once you drop down to the split stance, this becomes a balancing act. And what do we need to keep us balanced? That's right, our core. You can clearly see how I'm struggling to keep that band from pulling me back in. Well, that's the idea behind this. You need to fight to keep that band stretched out and not let it pull you in, which trust me, is easier said than done. You must wait till the band stops shaking and you stabilize yourself before you can go back to the original standing position to repeat this exercise. The video speaks for itself how much this is such a struggle. And of course, if you have a weaker side, this exposes it clearly. If you do not engage your core before performing this, then again, just like all the workouts you will see in this video, you will fail this. And the beauty about every single exercise in this video is it will expose when we aren't following the right steps. The banded L-sit is something I started to do as being a bigger guy. A normal L-sit is just at the moment a pipe dream. So this is a great accessory work to help not only strengthen your core, but also build shoulder strength and stability. You can either use paralytes or stacked plates or two benches. I'm using a heavy band, but you can progress this to a lighter band as this gets easier. There are three different progressions to this exercise. The first step is performing a normal L-sit, making sure to engage your core before getting into the L-sit and keeping your core engaged throughout the exercise. Step two, we will then progress this exercise by taking one leg off the band and holding one leg up for about 10 to 20 seconds and then performing this on the opposite leg also. Doing this will then require more core engagement and shoulder stability, which is what we want. Step three will be the next progression, which is bouncing both legs off and on the band. Now this is where this exercise becomes intense and honestly, if you struggle with step two, this is going to be even worse. Again, make sure your core is engaged throughout because if it isn't, despite the band, you will not be able to do this properly. All three steps are great for building core strength and also shoulder strength as well as stability. If you do a lot of gymnastics, this is a great exercise. If you can do L-sits without the band, I would suggest step three as an accessory work.
So you might think the standard leg raise is boring. Well, how about we make it more exciting and more difficult? So starting with a heavy dumbbell, I'm using a 32 kilo dumbbell. Now, please make sure it's a heavy dumbbell. Otherwise, well, you don't need me to explain what would happen if it's not heavy. You can also tie the band around a bench or something more sturdy. I am also using a very light band because anything stronger, you won't be able to perform this properly. Just like the leg raises, take a deep breath in before you bring your legs up and then breathe out at the top of the movement and really squeeze your abs like it owes you money. Now, as you do this, the band will act as a resistance when raising your legs up, which therefore means you will need to recruit more abdominal engagement to perform this exercise. You would also have to use your hips a lot more to perform this. And therefore, not only is this great for your abs, but also great for strengthening your hips. I call this the hyper superman because it is two moves in one. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, wait, the hyperextension is for your lower back. And yes, that's correct. But remember when I said your core includes your lower back? Well, here is where it gets quote unquote fun. Using the pipe, as you can see in the video, perform a hyperextension. And once you're in the flex position, the second step is to press the pipe out in front, as you can see in the video, aka like Superman. Now, what happens when you do this is your abdominals will fire up because by having your arms out in front, you will need a lot more stability from your lower back and abs to hold your body up. You can also do this with a light plate if you don't have a PVC pipe or a stick. To progress this exercise, you want to hold the Superman position for longer than three to five seconds. Remember to engage your core every single rep when performing this exercise. So take a deep breath in before you come up to the flexed position to build your lower back strength and your core, which transfers to every heavy lift you do in the gym and honestly, outside of the gym. So I hope you will get into it again. <laughs> hope you enjoyed the video. It is something different that some of you probably not used to, but I just thought I'll give you something different than the usual you know, I've done the usual. I've done two videos on abs. So it's time to build a strong core. So I hope you enjoy every single one of these. Try one or two, see how you get on. Uh, any questions, leave a comment below. I'll be happy to answer. Uh, I hope you found this really useful. As always, I'm exhausted. I'm going to get some food. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.